Say we have to solve the inequality we see here, that's x minus 3 greater than 3x over 5 minus 2. To get us started, let me move this to the side, like so. Now what makes this inequality tricky is the fact that the x is written on the numerator of a fraction. But there's a nice little trick for dealing with things like 3x over 5. And that is to multiply every single term of the inequality by 5. Here's what I mean. I'm going to multiply the x by 5, the 3 by 5, this fraction by 5, as well as this 2 by 5. So that would be 5 times x minus 5 times 3 greater than 5 times 3x over 5 minus 5 times 2. Focusing on this fraction for a second, when we have 5 times 3x over 5, it's important to see that the 5 that's multiplying the 3x will cancel out with the 5 that's dividing it. So I can just cross out these two 5s and we'll be left with 3x. Keeping that in mind, let's carry on. Our inequality becomes 5x minus 5 times 3, which is 15, greater than 5 times 3x over 5, and as we've just seen, that's 3x, minus 5 times 2, which is 10. And the inequality we're faced with now does seem a little friendlier. And to solve it, I'm going to start by gathering all the terms without an x on the right-hand side. Looking at the left-hand side here, we can see that 15 is being subtracted. So to get rid of it, I will add 15 to the left-hand side. But since I'm doing that, I must add 15 on the right-hand side as well. So we have 5x minus 15 plus 15, which is just 5x greater than 3x minus 10 plus 15. So that's plus 5. Now that that's done, I want to make sure I get rid of this 3x on the right-hand side. And to do that, I just have to take it away, meaning I have to subtract 3x from the right-hand side. But I have to do that on the left-hand side as well. So we're left with 5x minus 3x, that's 2x, greater than 3x plus 5 minus 3x, which is just 5. Finally, looking at the left-hand side here, we have x which is being multiplied by 2. So to get rid of that 2, I have to divide by 2. And once more, I must do the same on the right-hand side. And that leads us to the final answer. We have 2 times x divided by 2, which is just x greater than 5 divided by 2, which we can write as 5 over 2, or, and I'll write it in parentheses, 2.5. And that's the final answer. And if we want to, or if we need to, we can illustrate this answer on a number line. So if I have 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, and so on, to illustrate x greater than 5 over 2, which remember equals to 2.5, I place a little dot above 2.5, and from that dot I draw an arrow pointing towards all the numbers greater than 2.5. Notice that I'm leaving the dot above the 2.5 completely empty. That's to highlight the fact that x cannot be equal to 2.5. And there we go. Let's look at the next example. Let's say we have to solve the inequality we see here. That's x over 2 minus 1 greater than or equal to 3x plus 4. Again, I'll start by moving this to the side, like so. We can see that we have x over 2, and we don't like that. So to get us started, we're going to get rid of this fraction. In other words, we're going to get rid of the 2 on the denominator. And to do that, we multiply every single term by 2. So that would be 2 times x over 2 minus 2 times 1 greater than or equal to 2 times 3x plus 2 times 4. Looking at the first term we have here, x is being divided by 2, and it's also being multiplied by 2. Those two operations cancel each other out to leave us with x. So this inequality becomes x minus 2 times 1, which is 2, greater than or equal to 2 times 3x, that's 6x, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. We now solve this inequality the usual way. I gather all the terms without an x on the right-hand side. Looking at the left-hand side here, this 2 is being subtracted. So to get rid of it, I add 2. But if I'm doing that on the left-hand side, I have to do it on the right-hand side as well. So I'll add 2 here. That leads us to x minus 2 plus 2, which is x 
greater than or equal to 6x plus 8 plus 2, so that's plus 10. I now need to get rid of this 6x on the right hand side, and since it's positive 6x, to do that I need to subtract 6x. And once more I do the same on the other side. So on the left hand side we have x minus 6x, which is negative 5x, greater than or equal to 6x plus 10 minus 6x, which is just 10. Finally, we have x here which is being multiplied by negative 5, and so to get rid of the negative 5, we need to divide by negative 5. And as always, we have to do the same on the other side of the inequality. But careful, in this case we're dividing by a negative number. Remember, when we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse the inequality symbol. So this greater than or equal to will become less than or equal to. Here's what I mean. We have negative 5x divided by negative 5, which leaves us with x on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have 10 divided by negative 5, and that's equal to negative 2. But since we've just divided both sides by a negative number, we reverse this inequality symbol to state that x must be less than or equal to negative 2. And that's the final answer. As always, we can illustrate this answer on a number line. So if 0 is here, 1 is here, 2 is here, and so on. To illustrate x less than or equal to negative 2, I place a dot above the negative 2, and in this case, I fill the dot in. I then draw an arrow leaving that dot and pointing towards all the numbers less than negative 2. Notice that in this case the dot is filled in, and that's to highlight the fact that x can be equal to negative 2. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.